Welcome back. This is Dr. Jamie P. Motley, and we're going to be doing a lumbar spine oblique projection tutorial today. Now, the purpose of taking lumbar spine obliques is to see the pars interarticularis and the facet joints very well. Now, these views are taken in conjunction with the standard radiographic projections of lumbar spine, which include an AP lumbar slash AP lumbopelvic and a lateral lumbar projection. Remember that we take oblique projections with a patient oriented 45 degrees off the bucky, and the lumbar spine we do not need a tube tilt whatsoever. Remember that obliques in the lumbar spine are very different than obliques in the cervical spine both in the orientation of the tube as well as the purpose. Purpose for obliques in the cervical spine of course are to see the intervertebral foramen while the purpose of obliques in the lumbar spine is to see the pars interarticularis. Remember that we can see the intervertebral foramen very well of the lumbar spine on the lateral projections and again this is due to the orientation orientation of the pedicles as they extend straight posterior ward off the lumbar spine vertebral bodies. Remember that oblique projection should be taken either AP or PA and this basically means that either you're going to take anterior obliques or posterior obliques right and left side. Let's just have a quick review about anterior versus posterior cervical oblique, uh, lumbar obliques. In the cervical spine remember that anterior obliques will show you the ipsilateral or same side IVFs while posterior obliques show you the opposite side IVFs. Now in the lumbar spine anterior obliques show you the opposite side pars interarticularis and posterior obliques will show you the same side pars interarticularis. Now there's a very um, useful way that I've learned to remember this and our acronym is going to be CLAP. This stands for cervical lumbar AP. C L A P. And the way this works is if we took cervical spine AP, or excuse me, anterior obliques of the cervical spine, notice that the A is on the same side of the C, you're going to see the same side IVFs. If we took posterior obliques of the cervical spine, notice that the P is on the opposite side, we're going to see the opposite side IVFs. Same being true excuse me for the lumbar spine or I guess I should say the opposite being true for the lumbar spine where if we took posterior obliques we'd see the same side notice that these letters are on the same side if we took anterior obliques we'd see the opposite side pars interarticularis if this works for you use it if it does not then don't but this has proved to be somewhat useful in my experience now let's just get back to what we were doing all right so there is um, a certain structure that's created when we do lumbar obliques and this visualization or, or the orientation of these structures give us the visualization of a dog and we call this dog Scotty. Now I'm just gonna draw out Scotty here. We really only see the front half of Scotty. Maybe we can hallucinate a back leg and maybe even a tail back here. Okay, but Scotty has very big eyes and this Scotty represents one half of the posterior arch. Now there will come times when you need to know which side of the patient is which. In this case we don't have a marker. However, we're we'll arbitrarily named this the right side, which means that this is the left side of the patient. Now notice that Scotty is facing right, which means that these structures are right-sided structures. If there were an L over here, these would be left side structures. Scotty will always face his masters, or his master as dogs normally do. Now let's talk about the structures of Scotty. The nose of Scotty is the transverse process. The eye of Scotty is the pedicle, and in this case this will be the right pedicle. The ear of Scotty is the superior articular process with the leg being the inferior articular process. Now Scotty's body is the lamina. Now everything behind here we're not going to focus on because these structures actually belong to either the spinous process or the contralateral posterior arch. And therefore Scotty you're really only concerned about his the forward most part of his body and his head and neck. Now I want to point out to you the pars interarticularis region. Notice that this is a superior articular process and that this is an inferior articular process. We said that the area in between is going to be the pars interarticularis region. Notice this region corresponds to the neck 
of Scotty. Now you should not have any conspicuous lucencies in this area. If you do, as indicated at the area below, notice here that at this level Scotty's neck is broken. At this particular finding we conclude that this patient has a pars interarticularis defect. This level is L4. Notice that this is the sacral base. Here's the L5 segment with its Scotty dog and here is L4. Now this just represents the right side. We need to see the other oblique to determine if the contralateral pars interarticularis is in fact compromised. The facet joint is going to be between the superior articular facet of one segment and the inferior articular facet of another. This is why we can see the facet joints very well. Now let's get back to the pars. Notice that Scotty's foot, let's come up here to this segment, notice that Scotty's foot is directly in the neck of his brother. And this is what predisposes the pars interarticularis region to defects is simply because of the uh, an anatomy. Now this area will typically be affected in patients who do excessive hyperextension such as gymnasts, quarterbacks, typically athletic patients, but also can be seen in patients who have repetitive microtrauma, whether that's from work or any other activity. And this can insult the region, creating a stress fracture, and we call these spondylolysis. Spondylo referring to the spine, and then lysis referring to break. So spondylolysis. Now these defects can lead to slippage of the vertebral segment, which we call slippage spondylolisthesis. You may have pars interarticular interarticularis defects that can lead to vertebral body slippage and in that case we call it spondylolytic spondylolisthesis. Now without the lateral it's difficult to tell if this patient's vertebral segment has slipped. I suspect they do not as the anterior margin of the vertebral bodies of both the segments above and below are lining up quite nicely. Now if we needed to deduct how this patient was positioned we know that we're seeing right-sided posterior arch structures. We also know that in the lumbar spine, just switch colors here, we also know that in the lumbar spine, anterior obliques show us the opposite side and posterior obliques show us the same side, which means that this either had to be a R, P, O, or an L, A, O. That is as far as we can deduce from this particular radiograph. We can't tell if this was taken as an anterior oblique or a posterior oblique, but we know from the visualization of a right-sided Scotty dog that these two projections are the only possibilities. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you, and please join us again for future tutorials. Thank you.